Welcome to P3D. We are excited to announce a whole range of new features in our latest release. First of all, we have introduced animations and animation control. Let me show you a quick example of how to control animations in this awesome 3D model of a Tesla Cybertruck. First of all, in the main animation settings tab, you can see the available animations in this list and enable or disable them by clicking the small eye icons. You can also get the animation to loop or play only once by clicking this menu. Once you have set the animation settings for the scene, you can select this tag tab to link other animations to clickable hotspot buttons. See for example how clicking this tab will open the trunk of the Cybertruck. As you can see, the hotspot can have nested hotspots that only appear when the parent hotspot is clicked. This can be used to organize the hotspots and actions in a structured way. For example, this nested hotspot will show an animation of the internal trunk. And if I now click outside of the hotspot, it will zoom back to the parent hotspot. And if I click again, I will go all the way back to the start. Click this plus icon to create a new hotspot. Let's add a new animation control that opens the front trunk, or trunk of the truck. And let's attach this hotspot to the trunk of the Cybertruck. Then you select a so-called focus action from the list, which is the animation that will happen when the hotspot button is clicked. You can also select a leave action, which is the action that happens when you click away from the hotspot, for example, on another hotspot or anywhere on the screen. In this case, I will select the same animation but in reverse by adding a speed of minus one. And then I can set the focus point of the hotspot, which is where the camera will zoom to when the hotspot is clicked. Once this is saved, you can click the hotspot button and you can see that it opens up the front of the Cybertruck. And if I click outside the hotspot, it will close again. Now let's add a YouTube video into the description of the hotspot. You can use the markdown syntax to customize the link name like this. By clicking this checkbox, I can get the video to play in a pop-up within the viewer. The video is now visible when I click this link in the hotspot description. Thank you for watching this quick introduction to the animation features of P3D in. Please continue this video on how to get started using the P3D in service. We at P3D have been serving 3D content for thousands of professional users from all over the world for more than 10 years. In the following, I am going to show you a quick introduction to some of the key features of our 3D platform. How to upload a model to P3D and configure it. Once you have completed P3D registration, you get to the My Gallery view. You can quickly upload a new 3D model by clicking the New Model button in the top right corner and go into the File Selector. You can also drag and drop models into the File Selector. We support any of the major 3D file formats such as .obj, .gltf, .glb, .stl, .fbx, etc. Once you click the Select File button, you can choose a file to upload. Before saving the file, you can inspect it in the viewer from multiple angles, drag it around, zoom in, and so on. On the left hand side, you have a number of different controls, whereby you can change a myriad of different settings. For example, you can select the glass material of this model here, you can for example, change the transparency of the glass by sliding from side to side. I'm going to choose a nice tainted glass color for the windows. You can select the car paint material here, and as you can see, it's using a texture, in the form of an image texture file. This is also where you can add new textures, by clicking this button and searching for a texture file. This particular texture has all the nice details of this model, such as the model number and color details. You can also change the default and front camera views, 
For the front view, you can set the angle that represents the front of the 3D model. You can also click to set the default camera view. Once you are happy with your edits, you simply press save changes. And this is the moment where the model gets uploaded to the server, and saved to the server, so it's important that you wait until this completes, and the model reloads. How to customize the viewer. Next we're going to look at how you can customize the viewer. If I click this little eye icon, I can add different lightings to the scene, which is basically selecting from so-called HDRI lighting environments. HDRI environments represent realistic background lighting from different real-world scenes. And as I click on these different environments, you can see how the reflection in the paint, the color textures changes. I'm going to choose an outdoor environment here to make this particular model look more realistic. I can also set the intensity of the light source, and the rotation of where the light source and environment is, compared to the model. I can also set other things like perspective and field of view. If you're familiar with photography, then you will know what field of view and focal length means. I can also set a background, for example a red, or white background, etc. And, I can enable or disable augmented reality. Note that all your AR models work directly in mobile browsers, with no app download. And you can set the scale of the AR model automatically or manually here. How to enable collaboration. The next thing we're going to look at is sharing and collaboration. I can invite collaborators to either view, edit, or manage a model. And here you can see the model URL. I can also decide whether this should be a public, unlisted, or private model. How to embed a model. Let's look at how to share and embed this model. So, by clicking on this little share icon, you can basically share by copying the link of the model, or by generating a Facebook, Twitter, or Microsoft Teams embed. You can also click on a forum, but the most interesting thing here is probably the iframe embed code button. This generates an iframe embed code that is embeddable on any website. And as you can see, it has the URL of the model, with a small e, added in front of the URL. I can change things like what to show in the controls by clicking these different buttons. These are some of the controls, and buttons, that modifies your embed, for example, an AR control to let your users show the model in augmented reality, a full screen control, etc. You can also decide whether your users can zoom, rotate, and pan, drag the camera view. Or I can set things like a border shadow and so on. All of this will then generate one line of code that you can drop into a website's HTML code to generate a fully interactive 3D view of the model, without any branding and with your customized 3D controls. How to add hotspots. The next thing I'm going to show you is how you can add annotations, or hotspots, to the model. So let's create a new hotspot and focus on the cockpit, and add some description to it. In this description, you can have links in the markdown format. As you can see, it will show up as a link that you can click, in this case to see a video. Then, you can click the place hotspot button to attach the hotspot to the model at a particular area or location of the model, in this case the glass of the cockpit. Then you can zoom in and set the camera view for this particular hotspot. Once you click over here, the camera icon, the camera view will be saved when you press the save changes button. As you can see now, the model will reload. Once the model has reloaded, you can press the hotspot to zoom in on this particular hotspot. You can place web links, images, video and other content in the hotspots or annotations. Thanks for watching this short introduction. Please scroll down on our homepage to find more information.